Good evening from New York. The nation's biggest airplane manufacturer, Boeing, has bet its future on a revolutionary new airliner. It's become the fastest selling airplane in Boeing history. And within less than a year, passengers will be flying on what the company calls the Dreamliner. But a former Boeing engineer, as well as some senior engineers inside the company, say this plane is being rushed to market and could be unsafe to fly. Ladies and gentlemen, your 787 Dreamliner. In July, amidst much anticipation and fanfare, Boeing rolled out the 787 Dreamliner. The event was broadcast around the world in nine languages. The demand is so strong that if you ordered a 787 today for no less than $146 million, you would have to wait seven years for delivery. When you strip away the paint, the 787 looks like no other commercial airliner coming off the assembly line anywhere. Boeing has bet its future on this airplane, largely made out of high-tech reinforced plastics known as composites. A former longtime Boeing engineer is coming forward for the first time tonight because he says Boeing and federal regulators are compromising the 787's safety by rushing this new technology into the skies. The problem is all the unknowns that are being introduced and then explained away as if there's no problem. Well, this is how you sell a used car, in my mind, is you just make everybody comfortable and say there's no problem. Vince Weldon is a 46-year veteran of Boeing and a pioneer in aerospace design, including the use of composite structures. In his long career, Weldon played a major role in a wide range of projects, from the revolutionary wing design of the 727, which enabled it to land on short runways, to the Space Shuttle Two, Orbiter. One. Booster ignition and liftoff. Of Weldon space spent much of his career supervising the studies the for NASA the and the Air Force on weapon systems. Beyond. Boeing thought so highly of Weldon, they had him research how advanced composites could be used in the next version of the 787 and future commercial jets to make them lighter. Weldon says composites used on military airplanes for years have lots of advantages. It's a lighter structure for a given weight than aluminum would be. And therefore more fuel efficient. Right, and then you have the advantages of less corrosion and better fatigue resistance so you can possibly get a longer life out of the airplane. The 787's revolutionary design is setting a new standard for passenger comfort with large windows and better lighting. Boeing says the Dreamliner will save the airline's three billion gallons of fuel over 20 years. This should significantly improve their bottom lines. Well, given that, one can certainly see why an aircraft manufacturer, particularly a large one such as Boeing, would be very interested. Oh, yes, and, and all of them are, and it has panned out quite well in past uses, such as the B-2, which is a bomber, which is virtually all composite airframe. However, it's not a commercial jetliner, and it doesn't have to face some of the uh, negative factors that are inherent in composites. What are the disadvantages, questions, and dangers? The biggest problem with composites of the type that Boeing is using on the 787 is the lack of toughness. Toughness means resilience. Toughness means plastic deformation that absorbs shock if you have the a negative event of a crash landing. Weldon and other senior aerospace engineers still inside the company were so concerned they decided to break ranks in 2005 to criticize the 787 design. They feared for their jobs if they stepped forward and so they say they needed a well-respected Boeing voice who was close to retirement. I would say that they needed a spear point and, and it had to be somebody with uh, a record of accomplishment in de developing new hardware. So Weldon spoke to his supervisor. And what did he say? You're dangerous and you need to find another job. And uh, so I just said, well, that's a waste of time. <laughs> So then you take it to the ethics organization. Yes, I did. And you're confident at that time that uh, it's going to work itself I out. I thought it had a good chance. They uh, told me now, well, you're not only credible, you're super credible. 
The list of issues that Weldon and others have with the 787 program is long and includes major safety problems, as this February 2006 email written by a Boeing engineer indicates. Weldon and his supporters think the 787 program will turn into a nightmare if problems are ignored, and they worry about a possible engineering disaster much like the Space Shuttle Challenger in Columbia. In this August 2005 email to a Boeing top manager in charge of ethics investigations, an engineer wrote that if we do not rectify these issues, the 787 program will be the last for the Boeing company and will irreparably damage our reputation and finances. Boeing says they reviewed the complaints but found them to not be a concern. Weldon and his colleagues say they believe Boeing never did a truly independent review and that the company simply did not want to hear bad news about the 787 program. To get a better understanding of how composites are used in commercial jets, we talked to engineer Joseph Rago of Exponent, a Northern California aerospace consulting company. When I look at an aircraft, one that's built with composites, uh, would this include the fuselage? Yes, absolutely. Most of the very light jets that are, that are coming out on the market use composites heavily for the fuselage. The 787 uses composites heavily for the fuselage. The skin of the Boeing 787 is, uh, is about 100% is 100 composite structure. And the fact that the 787 has a composite fuselage or body makes the 787 lighter than an aluminum plane. In airliners, we're always trying to save weight to increase fuel efficiency, to increase payload, to increase uh, the number of passengers that, that, we can, that we can carry. Composites do not corrode in the way that aluminum does. So you can have a more humid environment in the cabin so that when you, when you land at your destination, you aren't all dried out and dehydrated. Last year, Rayco co-wrote a paper that looked at composites in aircraft accidents. One thing that is interesting about the difference between metals and composites is that metals are a ductile material. What does that mean? A ductile material is a material that deforms permanently before it breaks. So as an example, you, you can look at this flat piece of aluminum. This is, this is aircraft aluminum. And if you were to bend that, that piece of aluminum, it would look like this. Composites are different. They're a brittle material. A brittle material is one that does not deform permanently to any significant degree before it breaks in half. So if you look at these two pieces of composite, they were actually at one time one flat piece of composite. Mm -hmm. And what I had done was I bent it until it broke. And you can look at it now and see that there is really no obvious indication that it was bent. For Weldon, the brittle nature of the graphite and epoxy composite used in the 787 could mean trouble if the airplane crash lands. To illustrate his concerns, Weldon has called the attention of regulators to the 2005 crash of a European-made Airbus in Toronto, Canada. That plane came in in bad weather. It hit long on the runway. It overran the runway and went into a ravine that was about 30 feet deep. Now, when that thing first impacted the ground and it crumpled the fuselage, the aluminum fuselage was bent, but it was intact. Weldon says that gave the 309 passengers and crew enough time to escape the smoldering plane just before fire engulfed the entire fuselage. With a composite airframe, the fuselage would not crumple, it would shatter. Okay, and then when the plane nosed over into the ravine, that shatter hole would be there for the fire that's going into the airplane. So, instead of everyone getting out, a far less positive result. In fact, a, a tragic result at some level would have occurred. People say, well, you know, if you're in a plane crash, you're going to die, and when your time's up, your time's up. People believe that. It is absolutely false. People survive plane crashes all the time. Mary Schiavo is an aviation lawyer and former inspector general of the Department of Transportation, which oversees